Spectrum Disorder. Today is International Fetal Alcohol Syndrome Day, and this day helps to further an understanding of the effects of prenatal exposure to alcohol and the resulting disabilities. There is no cure for FAS, but it is preventable. We're joined in studio by Liani Walifir, uh, CEO of the Foundation for Alcohol-Related Research, and Adrian Burja, spokesperson for the in Industries Association for Responsible Alcohol Use. To both of you, thanks so much for joining us. I mean, anything that has to do with babies, I'm sure, pulls at most people's heartstrings, especially where you have to monitor adults uh, and tell them about the obvious implications that alcohol consumption has during pregnancy. Why is it that we're not getting the message across, Leonie? I think there are a lot of myths still around and a lot of people um, still the message need to get to a lot of people still and some people still believe that it's it, uh, only certain groups that are more at risk which is true because the Im information is not getting to certain people. Um, the basic message is that any woman who can fall pregnant and is drinking alcohol during pregnancy is at risk of having a child with fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. Oh, that's a reflection really on society, isn't it, Adrian, in the sense that we are huge consumers of alcohol, be it responsibly or otherwise, and that will filter through into other uh, sectors as well, be it in pregnancy or be it how we behave on the roads. Correct, Cindy. We need to get a behavior change really in our drinking patterns in South Africa. Uh, as you said, across the board, not just in terms of fetal alcohol syndrome. I think it's, it's, it's critically important that we try and, and, and not be alarmist, but we try and help people to understand the, the relevant factors. And as the industry association representing all the big manufacturers and uh, retailers of, of alcohol in South Africa, and we, we take the view if, you, if, you, if you're trying to fall pregnant, whatever, you don't drink at all. You know, the, we don't know the exact, or exact number of drinks that can actually cause the problem, so therefore err on the side of caution. Mm. Lely, what, what does your research indicate in terms of the prevalence in alcohol consumption during pregnancy? Well, um, South Africa has got the highest reported prevalence rate in the world. Um, there's a community in the Northern Cape where the uh, prevalence is as high as 122 per thousand, that's 12 percent. And the next highest reported um, level in the world is in America, um, one to two, uh, uh, one to three percent. So it's very, very high in South Africa. I'm so reported because um, not many countries have done this research so they, it might be that the other countries with a higher rate but we know that risky drinking and especially drinking during pregnancy is a big problem in our country mm. so um, yeah the research uh, in our research we have successfully identified the risk factors and some of the risk communities and therefore we're doing um, prevention and intervention work. Yeah, and, and the education message as well, again we're dealing with adults, one would assume, uh, and that they, they have some common sense uh, and, and yet it's not filtering through. How should the message be structured to have a more meaningful impact? Well I think you really have to be consistent, you have to keep at it and I think the Foundation for Alcohol Related Research for has done an outstanding job, for example, in this one town in the, in the, northern, in the northern Cape, where for the first time we've actually seen a reduction. I mean, that, that's a, that is wonderful. You know, these things usually take a long time to try and inculcate a behavior change, but they've actually managed through their interventions in this town, through the education of, of mothers and, and, and people in the community, they have managed to see a reduction, which we are delighted about. All right, now let's talk about the significance of the number nine and that being in the ninth month uh, of the year and what activities will be taking place today. Yeah, just firstly, where it started off in, uh, and the significance of the nine is, of course, women um, are pregnant for nine months. So it started off actually in New Zealand where a group of parents and foster parents got together and they were concerned about the fact that very little is known about fetal alcohol syndrome and the management of their children. So they linked via internet with a and got hold of a group in Canada and then decided that they're going to start lobbying for International Fast Day. And that started on the 9th of September, 1999. And what we're supposed to do every year on the 9th of September is to share this message of no, no alcohol during pregnancy with as many people as possible. And then groups of people across the globe, across the four, 24 hours, uh, you know, as time span, get together and they ring a bell at nine minutes past nine to call people up for action. All right. 
Uh, Liane, sorry, I'll just ask Adrian quickly to explain the knot, the first knot, and what that symbolizes. Well, I think if I don't ask Liane to do it, because I mean, she was the actual one that brought it along, okay, and she's sure. the boffin on it, if you don't mind, Cindy. <laughs> I don't know whether we can zoom in on the knot, but basically what the knot is all about, um, it's like the HIV AIDS knot that people wear, but it's a little bit different. It's, it's uh, made of string, and you will see there of, uh, the frayed ends of the string, which uh, symbolizes the damage that can be done to the central nervous system, the brain, if the child has got fetal alcohol syndrome, but it symbolizes also the umbilical cord, where the child is supposed to get food uh, through the umbilical cord and not alcohol. Then the circle symbolizes the, um, the, the safe little place where the baby, that's the womb or the uterus, where the baby is supposed to develop. And then the knot is very important. It's called the Canadian knot. It's a fisherman's knot. And if you put traction on the string, you will be able to break the string, but not the knot. And that symbolizes how strongly we need to support people, caring for fet uh, people with fe uh, fetal alcohol syndrome and also people with fat. We're going to leave it there, but thanks so much for both of you for coming Thank through. You. Thank you. We're speaking to Liana Olafir, CEO of the Foundation for Alcohol Related Research, and Adrian Buerta, spokesperson for the Industry Association for Responsible Alcohol Use. You can continue sending us your comments on sunrise at etv.co.za. Now we'll be joined later by the 48-hour film project producer Mukundi Lambani and former participant and producer Itumeleng Lisoba or Lusaba uh, to unpack the exciting global film competition. That's coming up in a short while. Spring is a special time of year when we start fresh and make sure everything is in good running order. So come into High Q for our special spring offers and get a free 10-point safety check with every purchase you make. Only at High Q.